I wanted Rambo still to be a lost man, a man who's wandering the world. So the idea was to seek out a place that would be the worst hellhole on the planet, the worst offender of human rights, abuses, wholesale slaughter, ongoing genocidal war. And we found that place to be considered by many, including the United Nations, as Burma. Burma is a beautiful country, and I grew up there, and I, I have friends from all the ethnic groups. It was an idyllic lifestyle. In 1949, Burma became independent from Britain. The new people that came in didn't have the same vision, and so that was the beginning of the Civil War. The history of Burma is one of the military, and the military is used to getting its way. They just uh, shoot, torture, throw people in jail. They were never good guys, but the previous dictators were not nearly as cruel as the one that's in power now. Everything is completely controlled, so the people are constantly ruled by fear. The major problems in Burma are, are pretty clear. There are child soldiers, I think 300,000 in Burma. There's torture used on practically anybody picked up. If there's any trouble in the streets, the soldiers shoot and kill and they'll hold you in a prison with no charge for years and years on end. There's probably 1,900 political prisoners at this time, maybe more. This military regime is like a mafia or a criminal syndicate. So the regime spends up to half of its national budget on their military, even though they have no external enemies at all. They're only using their weapons against their own people. In September and October, of of 2007, hundreds of thousands of Buddhist monks took to the streets inside Burma, marching all in organized rows, calling for human rights and democracy and an end to the military dictatorship in their country. They didn't have any guns. They were just marching, walking, and praying out loud. The people were lined up on either side to protect them. Unfortunately, the military regime cracked down. They opened fire with automatic weapons and at least 200 people were killed. They followed them to the monasteries. Many monasteries were raided and emptied, actually. And we heard stories of monks being bashed against the walls, you know, until they died. And those monks had to run, take off their garb, hide. If they could get away, get to Thailand to so save their lives, because they, they were cutting them to shreds. It's incredible that a, a Buddhist country like that can treat their monks like you know, they're not humans. Burma is a very ethnically diverse country. The Karen have been targeted the most because they have been one of the longest resistances against the oppressive regime. Karen people in some ways are similar to the Native Americans in the United States during the 18 and 1900s. They've controlled a territory that's been theirs for millennia, and the Burmese military regime is now invading that area and taking it over. The situation in Burma is much worse than Darfur, much worse. And the military is much meaner, because they're armed up, they got tanks, they got guns, they got firepower. When somebody is shot, when somebody steps on a mine, when somebody is hit by shrapnel from a mortar round, they don't die right away. And the hardest thing is that you see them with no hope, and they're asking you, how does it look? And what can you say? You know there's nothing you can do for them. And I think that's the hardest thing. The military regime has got a lot more brutal. And so over the last 10 years, they destroyed 3,200 villages in eastern Burma, which is where Rambo is set. Troops will jump out of the truck, go over, burn the houses. Everybody runs. They grab the women. They gang rape them. And they destroy the crops. I have seen a military order on how to treat a village, for example. The soldiers are encouraged to rape the women and are given awards based on how they were able to make this happen. The Karen have been dealing with constant attack by the Burma army, looting, indiscriminate shooting of their kids, and forced labor. In a word, it's forced relocation, but in reality, that's your whole life going up in flames. They think of unimaginable ways to be cruel. If the people have run away, 
they'll go into the homes and just punch holes in the pots so that they have no way of cooking. Hopefully they can go back, but very often before they leave the military places, landmines around the entrance to the village. About a million and a half refugees have fled out of that area into neighboring countries, or they're still displaced and hiding in the jungles inside eastern Burma. They live on the ground under just a little plastic sheet. When it rains, they get wet. They might arrive in Thailand or neighboring countries and try to get into refugee camps. Sometimes they're admitted, sometimes they're not. They're out of reach of the international aid groups. Just getting basics like rice and salt is, is a challenge. They're on the move virtually every day just trying to survive, and the military is hunting them down and killing them like animals. I was told it might be possible to rent your boat. We need to get upriver. Where? Into Burma. Burma's a war zone. The idea of depicting what truly happens to the Karen people and, and many other tribal people is so horrific that there's no way that I could have actually put this, these insidious uh, tortures on film. I think that the movie has done a very good job of portraying the military regime in Burma for what it is. The violence in this film actually been toned down from reality. I work on Burma every day. And so when I watched Rambo and I realized that the movie was realistic, it was inspiring for us to imagine tens of thousands of Americans and others around the world going into movie theaters to watch the movie and then coming out and actually having a decent idea about what's going on in the country. I think that's the power of seeing something starkly up on a screen that you haven't seen before. And you saw, you'll be amazed how many people come to our side because of this film. You know, I've checked the internet for news every day on Burma, and there's hundreds and hundreds of articles being printed around the world because of the Rambo movie about Burma. There's nothing else that's brought that kind of attention. If people inside Burma are caught with a bootleg copy, they could be killed on the spot. Or if they were women, they could be raped or, or sent to jail. Sylvester Stallone is very, very famous in Southeast Asia because of the Rambo movies. He's very much well known inside Burma. And look, the Burmese regime has reacted very angrily to this movie. And, you know, it's a fictional movie. I mean, the, the, it portrays the realities inside Burma accurately, but it's not even a true story itself. And the Burmese regime is absolutely scared of it angry, writing articles in their own state-controlled newspapers, telling people not to watch it. They've banned it. He's not allowed to go to the country. So you can see the power of an individual person like Sylvester Stallone through the movie w when they speak up. I mean, this is the type of thing that military regimes do not want. They do not want people around the world knowing what's going on and speaking up and calling for an end to it. I think the banning is just proof of, of the power of the film. We want the military to see it, not just the not just the people fighting for the change. We want the soldiers to see what they're doing to themselves. Ironically, because the military regime banned the movie, more Burmese people want to see it. Live for nothing or die for something. Your call. There's the phrase that is going around and people take heart, which is live for nothing, die for something. If the Burmese people are inspired by live for nothing, die for something, because that's their life. Somehow that little phrase is giving hope to many people in Burma. The poor in the world without justice are but shadows. This film, Rambo, has defined that land of shadows and has shown where it can go to a better, brighter day. And that, that's all an artist can do, but that's all we need from them. It's our job then to go to work and make, make the change and chase these people back to the barracks. I think what's important is what the Burmese people are asking the U.S. government to do, and the uh, Burmese people are led by Aung San Suu Kyi, the Nobel Peace Prize recipient. She's the leader of their struggle for human rights. She is the Mandela of Asia. There's no question about that. She's hunting for peace. She's hunting for reconciliation. And she and her colleagues have been asking the U.S. to impose political and economic pressure on the military regime. The biggest and the easiest thing is to spread the word about the situation in Burma and to make people aware. The most important thing is not to let this fade away again. Um, in the Western world, there's so much going on that the attention span is short, and it's critical that, that we don't forget about what's happening there. You know, in the 1980s, millions of people stood up and demanded freedom for Nelson Mandela and pressured Congress and the United Nations and universities and marched on the streets. And now the people of South Africa are free. And we're trying to do the same thing for Aung San Suu Kyi and the people of Burma.
my greatest hope is for the, all the people of Burma to be able to go home and live their lives. Nobody's asking for huge wealth, but just freedom from this terrible regime, terrible rule. They deserve to be able to go home.